All right, guys. Today, I'm going to cover a very misunderstood topic amongst pool players, okay, especially amongst beginners and intermediate players. But once you learn this, it is going to supercharge your game for being able to make shape and breakouts and uh, all sorts of other things, okay? So it is the tangent line, okay? A lot of people get confused about this very simple uh, fact, this very simple part of pool, the tangent line. Okay, number one, if you were going to take your stick or a stick and hit that ball in that pocket like this, okay? Not like this, but like this. That becomes your tangent line at the point of contact. Check it out. So I was to go like this, okay? Right there. This becomes my 90 degree tangent line. All right. <laughs> At the point of contact. All right. I have a simple template here. Okay. I'm going to point the arrow to the pocket. Right to the center of the pocket. This here is the tangent line. Okay. So how does that work? Well, as long as I hit this with a sliding cue ball, in other words, the cue ball is not going forwards or backwards, it is sliding. It is going to follow this line here, the tangent line, okay? 90 degrees. It doesn't matter now, this is important, pay attention. It doesn't matter where the cue ball is. Could be here, could be here, 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 or here, or here. Doesn't matter. The tangent line is tied to the object ball and the pocket. Okay, as long as this cue ball is sliding, it is going to follow the tangent line. Okay, here's an example. I have a slight cut, so the cue ball is obviously going to go this way. It's not going to go this way. If I was over here, the cue ball would go this way on the tangent line. I'm going to hit this with a sliding cue ball and I'll explain more about that in a minute and we're going to follow that tangent line. Okay, you see the cue ball followed this line, hit here and came out here. Okay, let's talk about the sliding cue ball. All right, if you are within about two feet of your object ball to the cue ball, a sliding cue ball can be achieved simply by playing a pure center ball shot. Remember, when you're playing center, it is the uh, bottom part of your tip, actually, that is making contact with the cue ball. So make sure that the contact point of your tip is actually center on the cue ball. That will create a nice sliding motion, okay? So this is a little less than two feet. I can just aim a firm, medium to firm shot, playing center ball, and we will follow that tangent line, okay? Perfect. All right, Big Al, what if you're further away? Good question. <laughs> for every foot you are away beyond the two foot mark, for every foot or so that you are further away from the object ball, you have to move down about a third to a half a tip, depending on your tip, depending on how hard you stroke it. But it is about a third to a half a tip down below center because you want that, you actually, you'll need some backspin on the ball for this part of the travel. And then it starts to go into a slide and you want to hit the cue ball, or the object ball when it's going into the slide. Um, if you hit it too soft, the slide is going to release and it's going to start to roll forward. And when you hit this ball, the cue ball will roll forward, okay? So it takes a little practice when you're more than two feet away to try to get the feel of making sure that cue ball is sliding, okay? By the way, when you do a straight on shot and it's a stop shot, it's a stop shot because the cue ball is sliding when it hits the object ball. There is no forward rotation, there is no backward rotation, like this. Let's see if we can do a perfect stop shot. Okay. Perfect. So the cue ball there was sliding when it hit the object ball. Check it out in slow-mo. Do 
you see I have a longer shot now. I need to follow the tangent line to get this breakout. So if I get too much backspin, the cue ball is going to miss them on this side. If I have some forward rotation, it's going to miss the breakout on this side. But if I can get that cue ball to slide as I hit this 13 ball, it will follow the tangent line right into the breakout. Check it out. Perfect. So why is it important to understand the tangent line? Because you can manipulate the cue ball, especially when the cue ball is away from a rail, you can manipulate the cue ball to go ahead of the tangent line or behind the tangent line. Okay, in this scenario, the tangent line going this direction is right going for the side pocket. So if I manage to hit this with a sliding center ball, cue ball shot, I will likely scratch. Check it out. Okay, so how do we avoid the scratch? Well, if I want to be on this side of the side pocket, I'm just going to play above center. Watch. And if I want to be on this side of the tangent line, so behind the side pocket and get down onto this end of the table, I'm going to play just below center. No side spin required. All right, and when you start to understand the tangent line, which is the number one thing, you could start manipulating a little bit with some side spin and stuff like that. So I know that if I hit this above center, the cue ball is going to hit on this side of the tangent line, probably right about here. And if I want to get down a little further, I'm just going to play some right spin on it. So this is what it looks like. Okay, and if there are a couple of blocker balls here and I still need to get to this end of the table, I'm going to play some um, below center with some left spin. All right. Okay, guys, and here is an important shot for tangent line training. I see that uh, if I take this 13, to the corner, and if I just slow roll this, um, I am likely going to scratch in that quarter pocket. So I see the tangent line, and you know, if you're learning this, you can actually get up here with your Q2 and visualize putting it in like I did at the beginning, and you can see the tangent line is right here for this chalk right here, okay? <laughs> so if I play the tangent line, Q ball is going to come towards this chalk and just come right into the eight ball. I got a large margin of error. I just can't overhit it. All right, but I need to make sure that the cue ball is sliding when I contact this 13 ball. It's not that hard. If I get too much backspin, the cue ball is going to come over here and back out. Don't want that. Okay, if I get too much forward spin, um, the cue ball is probably going to miss on this side of the pocket, but it's going to come back out because the forward spin is going to help accelerate it. So I just want to play a nice, soft tangent line shot. And even if I'm off an inch on either side of that chalk, I'm still going to have a shot on the eight ball. Okay, so let's do a softer tangent line shot and watch what happens. Okay, we hit right where the chalk was and we have a great shot on the eight. All right, guys, another crucial shot to have in your arsenal of shots. It's the stun slide over shot. Okay, I don't have much angle on the 13, just a little bit. So if I hit it with a sliding cue ball, uh, we should follow this line here and come out to the center table to have a nice shot on the eight on the side. Why don't I go forward? Because I don't want to make contact with any of these blocker balls because I don't know what's going to happen. Why, not, why don't I go backwards? Because I don't have a shot on the eight to those corners. <laughs> okay, so a nice little slide over shot is the perfect shot to get out here. It does take a little practice to get used to because if I'm a little above center on this shot or a little bit, if it, if it, if it's going forward when it hits this 13, it's going to go over here. And if it's kind of going backwards, it's going to go, I might scratch. <laughs> okay, or it's going to go on this side of the eight at the very least. So it is a good shot to practice. Let's see if I can get a perfect little slide on this shot. Medium pace on this because I don't have much angle. 
Okay, that's not too bad. We still have a nice shot in the side pocket. Um, I was trying to get here on this line. So as you can see, I went forward about this far off the tangent line. So which means when I hit that stun shot, I was just a hair above center on the cue ball. So the cue ball had just a little bit of forward rotation by the time I hit the 13, but it still worked and it's a good shot to practice. Okay, and that was almost perfect. We're just about an inch on or inch or two on the uh, back side of the tangent line. Still a pretty good shot. Okay, and that was a perfect tangent line shot. I did fall off the edge of my template here, but yes, it, it was going directly perfectly for the tangent line. And uh, that's how you stun a shot over and slide it. Okay, it's important to know that the further your cue ball travels, has space to travel before it starts hitting rails, um, the greater you can change its trajectory by uh, playing just the vertical line on the cue ball, center, top, bottom, okay? You can change its, its trajectory and get anywhere you want on the table by just playing that vertical line. When you're on a rail or close to a rail, you can't. <laughs> Okay, you have to use spin to rub off the rails in order to create new angles and to get places that you're naturally not going to go. When it's open like this, you don't really have to play side spin at all. Okay, that just complicates the shot. You can play low action, center action, and high action in different degrees and get anywhere you want. Okay, so as we can see, the, the tangent line here is going, if I'm taking this, to the arrow here is pointed to the side pocket, so my 90 degree 90 degree tangent line is almost at this second diamond here, just to the right of it. Okay, so if I hit that with a sliding cue ball, that's where it's going to go. And if I needed to make shape, I know that I could probably hit that with a sliding cue ball. If it's going to go on that path, it's going to go over here, it's going to come over here. Okay, but if I hit this just a little bit above center, all of a sudden now I know I'm going to risk scratching. <laughs> Watch, I'll hit this about one tip above center and we'll see what happens to the cue ball okay this time i'll hit it just a little above center and we'll see if we can get a scratch yeah okay now let's play more extreme top spin we'll see if we can actually hit around center table here Okay, now we'll play just below center. So if this is the tangent line, we're gonna come this way. We probably can get a scratch in the side if I play just a little bit of bottom. Oh, just about. All right, guys, remember our tangent line is here. When we played about one tip of backspin, we got about here. Okay, you see the tangent line is changing a little bit, or our trajectory line is changing. Okay, and if we play two tips of backspin, we should be able to get here. Watch. Okay, so we got the breakout. All right, guys, in summary, remember, the tangent line has nothing to do with the cue ball. It only has to do with your pocket that you're going to and the object ball that you're trying to get in that pocket. Okay, so this little template here, like I said, yes, you point this corner to the pocket. It shows you your 90 degree, 90 degree tangent line. It's the same thing, like I said, if you were to just take this uh, stick or cue and try to hit it in this way, right at the point of contact is your tangent line. Okay, now it is the same whether the cue ball is being hit from any of these positions or this position or this position, as long as you can still cut it in. It doesn't matter where the cue ball is, the tangent line is the tangent line for the object ball, as long as the cue ball is sliding when it hits it. This is even more crucial when you're hitting 
uh, near straight in kind of stun shots. Okay, when you're cutting it very fine, um, it it is uh, it is less affected by whether the cue ball is sliding or not. Okay, so if I was to cut this here to the side, um, and I need to hit right there. It really doesn't matter at that point because I'm hitting so little of this ball, whether the cue ball is sliding or not doesn't make much of a difference. Okay. But the tangent line is the tangent line. <laughs> okay. So when you can figure that tangent line out, that is your set point. Okay. Then you know that everything above the tangent line can happen just by playing higher on the cue ball. Everything below the tangent line can happen from playing below center on the cue ball. Or getting a little bit of backspin on the cue ball while you hit your object ball okay but your set point it's kind of like in celsius temperatures zero degrees is your freezing point everything above that is melting and anything below that is freezing and 100 degrees is your boiling point celsius is way easier than fahrenheit for my american friends <laughs> although you don't think so because you haven't learned it unless you're military then you know what i'm talking about anyways we'll talk soon guys thanks for the lesson see ya